When I start off doing a tailwheel endorsement, generally students tell me that they've heard that tailwheel flying is uh, harder work than flying a nosewheel aeroplane. I don't really agree it's true. Um, I do agree though that a tailwheel aeroplane is less forgiving than a nosewheel aeroplane. Um, a lot of that is to do with the, uh, the forces involved and the factors affecting the aeroplane. One of which is gyroscopic precession which gyroscopic precession is one that you hear about in your recreational license, uh, your private license, commercial license, but it doesn't become all that, uh, that well learned because it really doesn't affect the student all that much. Um, in, in many ways, the gyroscopic precession, the way the aeroplane rotates, uh, it actually helps, helps the aeroplane uh, maintain straight down the runway. Not the case with the tailwheel aeroplane. So, in order to prove that, uh, in the briefings I'll talk about it, but it is hard to describe and students don't really believe me until they see it. So, I've built here our aeroplane. Um, I've drilled a, drilled a hole into the electric cables going through the ceiling, make sure that it stays there. And I'm going to prove to you how gyroscopic precession works and uh, how it affects the aeroplane and, uh, and demonstrate what it will do to the aeroplane whilst we're trying to track straight down the runway. Um, it's going to affect us both on takeoff and landing, but it's going to be more effective uh, during the takeoff because of the, uh, the higher rotational speed of the propeller at the time. So, you've heard gyroscopic precession, gyroscopic stability. Uh, the gyroscopic precession is where when we put a force on a, uh, a, a turning force, a torque onto a gyroscope, which a gyroscope being our propeller, or our bike wheel, interpretive propeller in this case. And what happens when we put that force onto it, we get a resultant force at 90 degrees to the plane of the original force, uh, which means for a propeller rotating clockwise as seen from the cockpit, so something like this, it's gonna go the other way if it's on a tiger moth or a, or a yak or something like that, but something like a beaver, super cub, scout, the things I teach in, uh, it's clockwise rotating. So that means that as we put a force on it, i.e. lifting the tail of the aeroplane, then we're going to get a resultant force to the left like that which not corrected for means that we're going to go round and round down the runway. And you can see all the money coming out and screaming and fear and more money, all that sort of thing. So to demonstrate that fact to you, we'll get our propeller spin. So clear prop. And we'll get a measuring stick and we're just gonna lift the tail up. And you can see there that as soon as the tail lifted, our aeroplane starts yawing around to the left. Now I'm sure that there's many flat earthers and any baxes out there amongst you who are gonna say that I, I tapped, it, uh, tapped it with my ruler and made it turn that way, but I didn't, I promise. Look, see, when the gyroscope's not spinning, the propeller's not spinning, up, down, nothing exciting happens. Yet if we have a look at it again with our contact, Propeller spinning, you do the exact same tap. You can see that it starts to turn, and that's about what happens down the runway as well. The quicker the rate at which we lift the tail means the more we're going to get the yaw. So, doing things like short fields and that sort of thing, where we'll hold the brakes, push the power up, maybe to nearly take off power. Um, and then we raise the tail quite rapidly, means that we've got all of that gyroscopic force because of the, the takeoff power, um, and because we've lifted the tail quite so quite quickly, that means that we're going to get a much stronger yaw to the left. Um, so particularly in something like the Beaver, which has a, a big heavy propeller, because the more weight in the propeller uh, means the more precession we're going to get, uh, you'll find that it's almost full right rudder as we lift the tail from a short field. Let's go and have a look at a video that I uh, took of a short field takeoff in the Beaver. And uh, you'll see that as I release the brakes, you can see my right leg, you'll sort of see it, um, behind the control column. And you can, you can see my right leg move forward almost to full right rudder at that early stage of the takeoff from You can see it backs off again with the VSB. Again, effective, effective uh, rudder control with, uh, with extra airflow. And, uh, and of course, as we stop the pin tail, drive stop procession stop. Now we're also going to get gyroscopic precession and its effects as we're in the landing roll as well. So say we've just touched down and uh, we've done a wheeler landing, so we've 
touch down on the mains first, we're holding the tail up, we're going down the runway, we've got our gyroscope spinning, admittedly it's not spinning as quickly as on takeoff because we're at idle power, or very close to, um, but if for whatever reason we, we induce yaw, so we stomp the rudder or we get a gust of wind, anything that's going to cause us to yaw left or right, we're going to get a corresponding precession there as well. Although in this case, the corresponding, corresponding precession is going to be a pitch change. So let's, uh, let's have a look at the situation. Uh, say we've done a wheel landing and we stomp on some right rudder for whatever reason as we're going down the runway. Let's look at what happens. So, contact. Gyroscopic rigidity is sort of going to hold the aeroplane stable initially. I'll get a measuring stick. Now let's say that we stomp some right rudder. And look at that, see the tail goes up. So that's because we've got a gyroscopic precession happening uh, on the landing roll as well. Is it going to be as much as on the takeoff? No, uh, and that's because uh, several reasons, like we said, the propeller's spinning slower, but also we've got more airflow as well over the tail, which means that, uh, that we've got more, more control of the aeroplane to counter it. Uh, but the take home is that whenever we change one control surface, we're probably going to have a corresponding uh, force needed from another control to be able to keep the aeroplane straight. Whereas, uh, like I said earlier, with the, with the nose wheel aeroplane, the gyroscopic precession is actually helping our cause. So for example, if we're in our 172 and we're barreling down the runway, all that torque, interpretive term, pulling us to the left, um, as we rotate off the runway, the gyroscopic precession is going to cancel out and pull to the right. So there's minimal rudder required. Uh, whereas in a tail wheel aeroplane, it's working against us. Is that a problem? It can be, if we sit and do nothing. Uh, like the old adage that you haven't finished flying a tail wheel aeroplane until it's tied down or it's in the hangar. Uh, that's very true. So the best way of solving all these problems and, uh, and not overthinking it is looking as far ahead as possible down the runway. And I'll show you what I mean. So if here's our runway. And as you can tell, art was never my strong point. Now at the other end of the runway, uh, far up into the distance, we can see a tree. No, that's the wrong color for trees. Trees are green. I promise that's a tree. Then we have our aeroplane, and we're sitting at the other end of the runway. So it's something like that. Now if we pick something as far ahead as possible, so such as our tree, and we pick a rivet line, uh, something, a screw on the cow, something like that that we, we can reference as our straight ahead position. Uh, and quite often I'll, uh, I'll when I'm taxiing with a student, I'll get them to do some zigzags and start working out what, what actually looks like straight ahead to them so that they can reference that against the tree or, uh, or whatever they've picked as their reference point. Uh, as soon as the tail comes up, suddenly we'll be able to see our tree quite clearly down there. Um, which means that if we're looking as far ahead as possible, we've got that big pointer of a nose or our screw or whatever we picked on the cow referencing against our tree and it's basically like a poor man's hub, a heads up display. We're just looking straight ahead and we know if the aeroplane's straight or not. What I find is people subconsciously, and it's a natural thing to do, uh, night ratings fix this because the same thing happens looking at the, the landing light path, is that they look right in front of them, which means that they suddenly narrow the field of vision and really all they can see is the runway and they don't pick up as early when the aeroplane's moving side to side. Um, you'll find quite often that if you then say, eye straight ahead, a rook, and they can see that, and then suddenly the aeroplane stops moving. Uh, you'll see in that takeoff video that I just showed that uh, aside from glancing at the power and glancing once to make sure that, uh, that my flap handle was down, in case I needed to, to pump some flap, uh, you'll see that my eyes were, were out the front the whole time. Uh, and flying a table aeroplane, uh, and particularly, uh, particularly on the, the table of landing, it, 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 well, always on the table of landing, it has to be uh, eyes as far ahead as possible to be able to keep it straight. Um, just because you've got more of a reference of which to look at. Same thing applies on the landing, uh, as far ahead as possible. I find people look at where they're about to touch down and uh, that generally results in them not picking up as early when the aeroplane's not straight with the runway and then they're just playing catch up the whole time. 
hope that uh, that video was somewhat informative and uh, helps you with your tailwheel endeavours. Feel free to leave a message in the comments and, uh, and tell me what topics you'd like me to talk about next. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll leave you with a little video of uh, the beaver landing on a dirt strip or a grass strip as it was at the time. And uh, you can see how much the rudder is working. So basically constantly working the whole time, uh, making sure that the aeroplane chase is tracked straight down the runway as all these forces played their part in the landing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Thank <laughs> you.